Hey guys, thanks for joining me once again. This is a LDN V016 night vision monocular. It's made by Lindu, a company in Shenzhen that basically specializes in manufacturing night vision housing such as this. And housing is basically, you know, everything you see here, optics, electronics module, you know, a pod, an eyepiece, and all this, but without the intensifier tube inside. And they basically make housing such as this and then ship them off to companies abroad like ATN, uh, you know, companies like that. And those companies basically install the tube inside the, the housings and then they market them and sell them as their own. And famous examples of this include the QT and VG, you know, the Chinese panel that the housing and optics on that is made by Lindu. And we also have the ATN PS31, which is the ATN PVS31 clone. That is also made by Lindu, and this, the LDN V016, Lindu's latest offering, also happens to be half a PS31. So yeah, this is basically, you know, the ATM PS31, but without the bridge and without the other eye, and with a monocular uh, electronics module, boom, attached to the pod to make a fully functioning monocular. And uh, if I have to say one thing that makes this monocular special is that it is a 50 degree field of view monocular. And yeah, I don't, I don't really think there are a lot of monoculars out there on the market that's 50 degree field of view. The US PVS 31, uh, I mean PVS 14, this one's only 40 degree field of view. So yeah. All right, so actually, let's actually talk about the unit itself. So we'll work our way from the front to the back and in the front, we have a objective lens with a really nice retained objective lens cover. And it's a cap that also has a pinhole. So, you know, if you know use needing to use the, the unit in bright lights is important to you, then yeah, you have a pinhole cap on a unit that's also retained. And the objective lens itself is number one, focusable. And number two, it has a, an anti-reflective coating on it. It's not as nice as the anti-reflective coating on the PVS-14, but it's still there and it still works. In fact, I will say that the objective lens quality on the Lindu LDN V016 uh, is better than the OE PVS-14 that's made in Israel. Uh, this one is made by L3 and it uses a Fujinon Japanese glass with Japanese anti-reflective coatings and this one's really nice but the OE PVS-14 that's made in Israel isn't. It, I, that lens has no anti-reflective coating on it. And, but this one does. And while it's not as nice as the L3 PVS-14, it's nice enough for what you need it to do. And moving back, we have the front part of the electronics module, which has a light sensor, a power switch, and an IR illuminator. So the power switch has four positions. Position one is off, like you see here. Position two is on, like you see here. Position three is on with the IR illuminator, if you, as you can see here, on. And position four is the auto mode. And let's talk about auto mode. So auto mode is basically the unit uh, taking readings from the light sensor to determine whether or not it's bright or dark enough to turn on the IR illuminator. So the rationale behind this is, let's say you have this on your head and you're walking around in full moonlight. Full moonlight is bright enough for any Gen 2 or Gen 3 tube to, to give you a really nice picture without IR illumination. So if you have the IR illumination on when you're walking in full moonlight or in your know, bright places like that, you're basically just wasting battery. So auto mode turns the uses the light sensor to measure the light level, and if the light level is high enough, it turns off the IR illuminator automatically to help you save battery. However, if you then walk into somewhere dark, like you know, under tree cover, under starlight, or you know, indoors without any lights, and it gets dark enough, whoop, look at that. I, look at that. If I cover the light sensor and it gets dark, the IR illuminator turns back on. So yeah, that's basically the the auto mode when it's hot when you know when it's bright enough it turns off the IR illuminator automatically for you and when it gets dark enough it turns the IR illuminator back on for you. So yeah, that's a pretty nif little feature that you know something like the US PVS14 doesn't have and a lot of units don't have. All right, so moving back we have a mini rail mount. So the mini rail mount is. Um, it's not mil spec, I don't think, but yeah, it is present on a lot of units from ATN, Armorsight, FLIR, and from oh, uh, the Russians also make uh, units with the uh, mini rail mount. It is basically, it's basically quite ubiquitous. 
with units that are not you know US mil spec and uh, you can attach this to a helmet via this mount here which is sold by you know ATN armor side whatever basically a lot of companies sell these and Lindu also markets these all right so let me demonstrate mounting the unit onto this uh, mini rail mount so it's pretty simple and it works the same way as any other mini rail mount you basically press the button down on the screw on top to you know lower tap out of the way and then you basically just slide the mini rail onto the mount release the button yep like so and just tighten the screw and the unit is secure and the mini rail mount i really like it it's actually a lot more secure than uh, the divot and uh, tripod screw arrangement on the pbs 14 and the j arm because this can still wobble side to side you know torsionally but the mini rail setup it has no torsional wobble at all and it doesn't you know wobble front to back or side to side or vertically so yeah this is actually a more secure mounting system than what's whatever is on the PVS-14. All right, now let's also demonstrate the uh, flip off shot off feature. So uh, if you have it mounted properly, let me just turn the unit on. Yep, like so. The unit will shut off automatically when you flip up, like so. Check that out. And yeah, when you flip the unit back down to you know look through the unit again, let me just do it Boop, over here it will turn the unit back on for you. So yeah, flip up, shut off, flip down, turn on. Pretty nice. Definitely a useful feature if you're planning on you know, doing that operator shit a lot. So yeah, let me turn the unit back off and turn it, yeah, you know, remove the mount. And to remove the mount, basically undo the screw, push down on the tap button, and you know, slide the rail off. Really simple, really easy. It's not one step like the PBS-14, but then again, it's a lot more secure. In my opinion anyways so moving back we have the battery compartment basically just undo it like this and it is a waterproof battery compartment with an o-ring and it takes a cr123 battery pretty nice and yeah cr123s lithium batteries they a cr123 with the tube i have installed inside here will basically give you definitely in excess of 48 hours of continuous use this is still the same cr123 i have installed in this unit since i got it like last year <laughs> yeah it will definitely give you a lot of runtime all right and whoop, almost dropped it moving back we have the uh diopter adjustment for the eyepiece and this is basically just you know focusing the image that the tube generates to your eye so you adjust this depending on how good or bad your eyesight is and it's quite a wide range i mean i'm a i'm negative one on my left eye negative 1.25 on my right eye and yeah it's not it's not severe but this you know works it's not severe myopia but yeah this can focus really sharply for me let's actually now compare this unit to a pvs 14 in terms of size and let me just also you know uh, take the rubber eye cup off to do a fair comparison so comparing to the pbs 14 i also weigh this later it's definitely shorter the pod diameter diameter is definitely smaller as well and in terms of overall girth including elect electronics module it is also definitely less girthy it's narrower and comparing to this side as well, the electronics module on the LDN V016 is definitely smaller. And this is definitely a lighter unit as well. In terms of material, the PVS14 is made out of a, of a really tough impact polymer. And this, uh, I'm I'm actually not sure what this polymer is made of. It's definitely tough, and it also has. A, 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 when I was assembled this unit, I I looked inside, and it definitely has metal reinforcements as well. But is this a I don't know whether or not it's ABS, but yeah, this is definitely a, a tough polymer as well. I don't think it's as tough as what's on a PBS-14, but it's a decently hard polymer that also has metal reinforcements on inside. So yeah, I, I, I bet this unit can take a beating or two. So yeah, that's basically it. All right, so how do the optics on the LDMV-016 compare to that on a PBS-14? Well, let's talk about it. 
So I'll also bring up a table of specs here in comparison. And the PBS 14, it has a field of view of 40. And this has a field of view of 50. But yeah, wider field of view. So, you know, when you're walking around, uh, it's a little bit more convenient. You don't have to turn your head around as much. But that's pretty much the only advantage this has over this. Uh, in terms of optic optic status. The anti-reflective coating, yep, they both have it. However, this one is a lot better than this. And in terms of clarity, this also is a lot better than the LDNV. You know, the PVS-14 is also a lot better than the LDNV-016. You know, the L3 PVS-14s are famous for having excellent optics. And this, it's uh, it's usable. However, the clarity does not compare to this. And in terms of low light performance, the NNVT Gen 2 Plus 2 by half inside here, before it was in here, it was in here. So I do have a rough impression of what this tube looked like through this unit. And let me just say this. Uh, this doesn't gather light as well as this. Well, or maybe it's because it has a 50 degree field of view. So you're looking at the same level of light that's spread out over a wider field of view. So it made it make the image appear darker. So yeah, this in terms of raw low light performance, this is also eclipsed by the PVS 14. You know, the LDNV 016 isn't as good at gathering light and making things appear bright as a PVS 14. However, that being said, it is still usable in really low light conditions, as in it will still see a shape, but that shape may not be as detailed or as pronounced as you know uh, when you view it through this with the same tube installed. So yeah. That's basically the optics on both of these summarized. And oh yeah, before we go any further, I would just like to introduce the tube that I've uh, put inside this LDN V016. It is an NNVT Gen 2 tube. Here are the specs. And I'll also be comparing it to a US Omni 8 Gen 3 tube in this PVS14 right here. And I'll also put the specs right beside the specs of the uh, NNVT tube. So the NNVT tube I have in here isn't going to be exactly a fair apples to apples comparison for the LDNV and 016 versus the PVS14 with the uh, Gen 3 Omni 8 tube because uh, number one, the Gen 3 Omni 8 tube is an accepted military tube. It meets all the you know US mil spec requirements. However, this is a fallout tube. And by fallout tube, I mean that, that when a tube le left the production line, it had performance that did not meet military requirements. So they rejected the tube and they sold it off to civilians and that's basically how I got the tube. And uh, in comparison, the PVS14 here has a US Omni 8 mil spec tube installed. And this does have a Gen 3 tube that does meet military requirements. So the tube inside here is, it has higher gain and it has better sensitivity and also has slightly higher resolution than what's inside here. So uh, when I compare these two units side by side and when you see those uh, comparisons, it's not going to be exactly a fair apples to apples comparison of the optical qualities of both of these night vision housings. So yeah, that's that out of the way. All right, so let's actually talk about the eyepieces on the LDMV 016 and on the PVS 14, specifically about the uh, eye relief. Now, the eye relief is how far your eye can get away from the unit's eyepiece before you stop seeing the full field view. And let me just demonstrate this. So, here is the LDNV 016 all the way right up to my uh, phone camera's lens. So that is what basically what you will have when you're wearing the unit you know, right up against your eye. However, if you're wearing something like goggles or a gas mask, the unit will have to be further away from your eye, something like this. Notice how when I move the unit away, suddenly you stop seeing the full field of view. That is the uh, eye relief. So yep, the eye relief distance uh, until you the eye relief distance of the LDMV 16, where you can still see the full field of view. Let me just uh, eyeball it with my thumb. Is around yeah one thumb width away. So yeah, when I move it just to where you stop, just to where you know the edge starts to get you know uh shaded out by the outer edges of the eyepiece is around one thumb width and if you move further away than one thumb width then you know your field of view shrinks like this so in comparison the pvs 14 let me just demonstrate it here right up against the unit i can move away quite far before yeah like this before it starts losing field of view. And that is a staggering 
yeah, at least two and a half thumb widths away. So the eye relief on the PVS14 is two and a half times better than what's on the LDMV 016. And this is so important because uh, the LED relief also det determines the eye box, the size of the eye box, meaning how far you can, you know, deviate to the right or left before, you know, you stop, you know, you stop seeing a clear picture. And the LDMV 016, it is not a lot. The, any sort of offset to the left or right immediately, you know, uh, starts giving you a little bit of distortion. However, it is perfectly clear, no distortion to the edges when you know, you're know you viewing uh, through the eyepiece dead on, but any sort of you know offset to the left, right, up or down, you start getting you know, this. However, on the PVS-14, you don't get any of that. You can move down a bit. Oh, wait, hang on. Yeah, let me just uh, position, it, position it carefully first, but yeah. You can you know move left a bit, right a bit, right a bit, left a bit, up a bit, and down a bit before, you know, you start, you know, getting, well, it's still not great, but it is a lot better than what's on the uh, LDMV 016. That being said, the LDMV 016 isn't unusable. It's still definitely really usable. Um, you know, you can still mount it to your head using the mini rail mount and uh, it will still give you a clear picture as long as you adjust it right. And it is still usable with things like gas masks and slimline goggles. And by gas masks, I mean, you know, the modern ones with conformal lenses like, you know, uh, M53, M50, the Russian PMK S and 4 and, you know, gas masks like that. It will still work. However, you, uh, when I, I, what I noticed is that when I wear the gas mask is that I, I will have to put the unit further away from my eye and I won't be really getting, you know, full 50 degrees of view. I will be getting something like, you know, 45 or maybe even 42 degrees of field of view when I'm using it with a gas mask or goggles. So yeah, it's not ideal, but you know, it's not unusable. It still works. You can still use it that way. But yeah, that's that. Now let's actually move on to testing the unit in different lighting conditions. All right, so I'm in my storeroom. It's a uh, pitch black to the camera, but there is a little bit of a daylight that's seeping in from under the you know, storeroom door. And uh, yeah, the night vision units are really good at picking up that kind of thing. So this is the NNVT Gen 2 Plus tube, the fallout tube, reject tube in the LDN V016. I'm gonna basically center the field of view on that toolbox there and you can see that you know <laughs> it basically fills the entire phone camera the field of view now i then move down to the pvs 14 and uh yeah there we go can i see can i fit? yep there we go and i center it on the it doesn't fill the entire field of view of the uh phone camera and then again it also doesn't you know see as far to, towards the edges as the LDN V016. However, as you can see, well, it's also probably because it's also using a Gen 3 tube, it is a lot brighter and it is also a lot clearer. Like so. Now let's actually move into somewhere that's a little bit more challenging. Let's say the washing machine. So yeah, now I'm staring down into the washing machine and this is through the LDN VO16. And yeah, this is getting really, really, really black here. Really, really dark here. So yeah, that's uh, staring down into the uh, washing machine in a pitch black storeroom. And that, that is with, that, that was through the LDN VO16 with the Gen 2 tube. And this is through the PVS14 uh, with the uh, Gen 3 Omni 8 tube installed. So yeah. LDN VO16, not as bright, not as clear. PVS14, oh yeah. I mean, this is still usable, but yeah, this is still very usable, but this is just better. So yeah, now we're in the same storeroom <laughs> at night. I can't see jack shit in here because now it's actually pitch black. There's no daylight seeping in from in from under the door and yeah this is what the LDN VO16 sees the only light sources here is that you know that IR beacon for the uh the road the for the you know the floor sweeping robots recharge station 
and a little and a few you know uh, white LED indicators on on the machines that are uh, outside the storeroom. But yeah, there's no daylight CB and I can't see anything with my eyes. And this is what the LDNV 016 with the um, uh, NNVT Gen 2 Plus tube sees. And this is what the PBS 14 with the um, Gen 3 Omni 8 tube sees. Well, it actually looks a lot better in camera, but to the eye, there's not that much, you know, this still sees the detail, yeah, this still sees the shapes and everything. This is still usable, but yeah, look at this. Quite a difference. The washing machine over there, yup. Just getting some difference, I'll, I'll do side-by-side -side comparisons, but yeah. Oof. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's basically the comparison of these two units in low light.